Petrarch's Letters to Classical Authors by Francisco Petrarch. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 1 To M. T. Cicero I have read thy letters through to the end most eagerly letters for which i had diligently searched far and wide and which i finally came upon where i least expected i have heard thee speak on many subjects give voice to many laments and waver frequently in thy opinions o marcus tullius hitherto i knew what true counsel thou gavest to others now at last i have learned to what degree thou didst prove mentor to thyself wherever thou mayest be hearken in turn to this i shall not call it advice but lament a lament springing from sincere love and uttered not without tears by one of thy descendants who most dearly cherishes thy name o oh, thou ever restless and distressed spirit or that thou mayest recognize thine own words o oh, thou rash and unfortunate old man why such countless enmities and rivalries bound to prove of absolutely no benefit to thee where didst thou forsake that peaceful ease so befitting to man in thy years and of thy vocation and of thy station in life what false lustre of glory involved thee although weighed down with years in the wrangles and frays proper to youths and driving thee hither and thither through all the vicissitudes of fortune hurried thee to an end unworthy of a philosopher alas forgetful of the admonitions of thy brother forgetful of thy own numerous and wholesome precepts like a traveller in the night didst thou bear the light in the darkness and didst enlighten for those following thee the path on which thou thyself didst stumble most wretchedly i forbear to speak of dionysius i shall make no mention of thy brother nor of thy nephew and if it pleases thee i shall pass over dolabea too man whom thou dost praise to the skies at one moment and the next dost rail at in sudden wrath such examples of thy inconstancy may perhaps be excused i omit mention of julius caesar even whose oft-tested mercy proved a haven to refuge for those poor persons who had assailed him i shall say naught of the great pompey with whom it seems that thou couldst accomplish anything thou didst set thy heart upon such was the friendship between you but what madness arrayed thee against antony love for the republic i suppose thou wouldst answer but as thou thyself didst assert the republic had already been destroyed root and branch if however it was pure loyalty if it was love of liberty that impelled thee and we are justified in thinking thus of so great a man as thou what meant such intimacy with augustus indeed what possible answer can thou give to thy brutus if says he thou dost embrace the great octavius the evident conclusion will be not that thou hast rid thyself of a master but rather that thou hast sought a kindlier lord there still remained this lamentable finishing stroke o cicero that thou shouldst seek ill of that very man notwithstanding thy previous high praise and on what grounds not because he was doing thee any wrong but merely because he did not oppose those who were i grieve at thy lot my friend i am ashamed of thy many great shortcomings and i take compassion on thee and so even as did brutus i attach no importance to that knowledge with which i know that thou wert so thoroughly imbued forsooth what boots it to instruct others of what profit to discourse eternally on the virtues and that too in most eloquent terms if at the same time one turns a deaf ear to his own instructions ah how much better had it been for a man of declining years 
and especially for one devoted to studies even as thou to have lived his last days in the quiet of the country meditating as thou thyself hast said somewhere on that everlasting life and not on this fleeting one how much better had it been never to have held office never to have longed for triumphs never to have vaunted of crushing such men as catiline but tis vain indeed to talk thus farewell forever my cicero written in the land of the living on the right bank of the river adigi in verona the city of transpodane italy on the sixteenth day before the calends of quintilius june sixteen in the thirteen hundredth and forty-fifth year from the birth of that god whom thou never knewest End of Petrarch's Letters to Classical Authors, Chapter 1 To M. T. Cicero, 1626-1628